garden lovers and summer lovers and just lovers in general welcome to Marvin Gardens July 2020 and uh, I'm actually shooting this a little before I typically shoot the uh, monthly garden video um, which I usually do maybe the third week plus into the month but today I'm just a little past halfway through the month of July and the reason I'm shooting it is because if there were like three four five days in the month of July where the garden was at its actual peak um, by all intents and purposes it would be now so uh, I want to do that um, shoot the video now because this is July and these are the high holy days of gardening. So, off we go. First of all, Frankie is here to help uh, us on the guided tour. And uh, we'll start, since we're over here in the fire pit area, with the herb garden. And um, that brings us, of course, to Coco, the garden watching uh, rooster, and uh, the garlic chives, aka, um, uh, aka what? Uh, Asian leeks are just doing fantastically as they have been doing all uh, season long. Uh, this is, like I mentioned before, I think uh, uh, um, a smooth leaf parsley that that uh, wintered over and came up from last year and I think this might be something too but I don't I don't know what it is behind it is uh, rosemary and uh, which Frankie is showing some interest in and um, in front of him is uh, uh, German winter thyme which has been doing pretty well now what has not been doing well is um, uh, common sage and uh, it just all died all of a sudden so I have planted more from seed in that spot right there and uh, we'll see what happens we also interestingly enough all over the garden we have what appear to be pond irises coming up so generally when I see them I, I let them go um, and uh, this is parsley it doesn't look so great but we've been getting a bunch in um, the leaves we, we have more coming in than we even know what to do with so uh, chives are still looking very fine, as is all our basil. Uh, this is the, the purple basil that I the store-bought plants, and look at how the Asian basil that I planted from seed is is coming in very nicely as well. So um, I probably should thin those out a little bit, and, um, but it looks like they're peacefully coexisting rather well. Um, let me show you something else as long as we're here. And that's in the um, uh, the greenhouse. Um, we have started to lay down um, uh, pavers to uh, to um, uh, put a floor in this thing um, because cutting the grass in here, which then turned into weeds, uh, was getting kind of old. And so we're in the midst of just figuring out how everything's going to get laid out and. Uh, there's a lot more we have to buy in order to complete the job, but we're on our way. This is a, an onion that just sort of popped out on its own, so we brought it in here to dry out. And these are the garlic, which I'll, uh, it's not all the garlic, but um, it's the stuff that uh, looked like it was ready. So it's just drying out in here, and then uh, I don't know if I'll braid it or not. And last time I tried braiding garlic, it was just too hard to do, so, so I don't know. Uh, all right, so let's uh, venture on over to bed number one. And um, what you'll see here is uh, you're, gonna, you're probably going to say to me, uh, I thought you were going to show us Peak Garden, Marv. I see uh, a vacancy there. Well, it's not really a vacancy. Uh, as you can see, 
this is radishes that have just recently come up and that's our third planting of radishes and the what looks like a vacancy over there is actually two rows of our second planting of carrots and the carrots are always much slower to come up and I frankly don't see any and there's another one of those pond irises which like I said I'm leaving for now um, this is the first planting of broccoli uh, there's a few more um, side shoots coming up that you might be able to see there um, but they're a little bit on their last legs um, back there is a um, large Brussels sprouts Brussels sprouts plant because um, I didn't have quite enough um, of one or the other to fill so you know some of them get placed sort of out of place shall I say in other words there's a Brussels sprouts there in with a broccoli so sue me anyway here's the uh, second planting of uh, brassicas in this case we're talking about uh, some broccoli and some uh, Skywalker cauliflower in uh, you may notice that um, they don't look so hot in some cases. That's because I used what was supposed to be an organic uh, flying insect spray inside when they were under the lights and uh, they didn't like it. And it didn't kill the flies either, so I basically threw that away. Um, this is our uh, formal stand of um, um, Brussels sprouts. And uh, if you look closely down there, if I can, you know, get a shot of it. There are Brussels sprouts coming in. We've harvested a few. Oh, there looks like there's some pretty good sized ones down there. Not too bad. And um, uh, we've had an infestation, unfortunately, of white flies. Um, but I'm happy to observe that uh, there are still a few white flies there, but they're not nearly as bad as they uh, had been so our spraying of uh, neem oil and alcohol and red pepper uh, seems to have helped now we've got lots of um, okra coming in Th those pods that I'm showing you are ready uh, it's too late in the day to show you a bloom um, but these guys are doing very nicely you can probably see that they're a good four feet tall and then uh, before I forget um, this is our kind of no man's land where we put leftovers. The, the um, uh, rosemary do better over here than they do in the herb garden. We've still got some parsley here. And, uh, and then these are summer squash, um, notably smaller than the summer squash uh, that's officially there. But we have been getting uh, plenty of, plenty of uh, uh, stuff out of these guys. So I'm not complaining. Um, the pet memorial area is looking uh, festive with uh, flowers, some that are winter, wintered over and some that are new. And we got some really low growing dianthus. Uh, one bloom there, they have survived. They were from last year, but they're not blooming very much. But in general, the, the pet memorial area looks pretty good. And then um, this is our stand of um, uh, well that's me standing right there um, but this is um, scarlet runner beans which are, are known for their their scarlet um, uh, blooms which are edible but we haven't really been harvesting them and uh, eating them um, but uh, I'm just now seeing there we have a uh, a runner bean coming in so uh, we'll be harvesting them pretty soon that's for sure um, now <clears throat> uh, the compost heap isn't much of anything because I still haven't got any loads of manure yet but um, that's gonna be shortly on the list uh, there's some I don't I don't know what kind of squash this is that's been growing out of the compost heap but once it finally hit the sunshine, it's uh, it's um, uh, at least finding a little, but uh, don't expect to get anything out of it. But where I do expect to get something out of is um, 
uh, right here. And uh, as you can see, the grow house is growing. Uh, these are now just two pumpkin plants. I got rid of the third one because there was just no room. And uh, the good news is that uh, at least it looks like I'm going to get my quota of one, one pumpkin per plant. Now, um, I don't know if you can tell the size, but that is a good size pumpkin. And um, it looks very healthy and happy. Um, so far, all the leaves look very healthy and happy. And I've got another one um, that's very similar to it in size and health uh, back in that corner there, which I'm not going to try to go in there and see. Now, the bad news is I do have some cucumber beetles in there. <clears throat> um, and I don't know why. Oh, there's a praying mantis right there. So maybe I should let him in to uh, go take care of some stuff. Anyway. Um, so I don't know it's because my screens were disintegrating this, the, the original screens on this thing um, or, or, or what but uh, uh, the good news is I have also sprayed them with the, my neem oil and um, alcohol and, and red pepper uh, concoction which is totally organic and uh, it may have helped some at least now the summer squash has just been crazy and um, now that I uh, am mentioning that uh, I'm going to be inserting all kinds of um, harvest basket uh, etc um, um, photos um, because it's just been uh, crazy uh, Vanina's been uh, um, uh, roasting we've been roasting on the grill um, all kinds of stuff and uh, um, including uh, cabbage and uh, um, you know lots of the brassicas all the all the cauliflowers first time around anyway uh, so you'll be seeing those um, throughout this video um, and here is the uh, the onion bed and as you can probably see some of them are starting to fall over and um, that's the other reason why I wanted to um, uh, shoot this July video now was because um, this is is um, an indicator that we are going to be harvesting <coughs> all the onions out of here within the next couple of weeks um, they're usually they, they the three varieties that I grow are are um, you know staggered in in when they um, uh, mature um, but these are Patterson down here they're starting to fall over the red wings are uh, not falling over as much um, but the uh, candy onions and oh, look at the size oh, let me get my hand down there so you can see if I can get my hand down there you can see that's another uh, award winner down here um, as are those. Those are a good uh, four, four, four and a half inches across. Um, and uh, but uh, you know, I love the way these these beds look in June. But in July is when they say, "All right, you're about to get your onion harvest." So that's where we are. This is bee bomb, which is pretty much. Oh, that's a. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a hummingbird moth, believe it or not. It's a, a, a moth that tries to look like a hummingbird and does a pretty good job of it too. And there's a, a bumblebee. All right, so <clears throat> next in line here, um, and we're at bed number three now, is uh, eggplants, which I have just come through and um, staked up because they're getting so heavy with eggplants like that coming in uh, this is a variety called Barbarella and I got them because they're just big and round and so uh, and uh, they are not ready to harvest yet but boy are they they coming in and uh, I've said before one of the things I like about eggplant is just it's that brilliant purple color in the middle of the garden um, 
this is our uh, peanuts and um, I remember last year I was a little concerned about the the rate of growth of the peanuts but uh, now that I know that they grow kind of slow I'm not so worried and um, uh, let me see if I can find one for you um, I can't really but it tucked in there is a, a yellow um, blossom that's not really opened but uh, that's where the peanuts come from and uh, like I've said before they just sort of burrow themselves down into the ground and that's where they grow now this kind of ugly structure is actually my attempt at um, uh, at um, sheltering uh, um, lettuce and uh, what's spinach that I don't see very much evidence of here um, from the hot summer sun in hopes that uh, uh, we can get some uh, a second harvest before they actually um, start bolting but uh, this is not the prettiest structure um, and I don't even know if it's working correctly but uh, we do have some some lettuce coming in and a few spinach coming up I hope I didn't block so much sun that the spinach isn't even going to come up. Uh, while we're here, uh, here's the fire pit area, which uh, we're not making use of tonight, but um, uh, we have certainly. And uh, we've got a new, uh, new heavy-duty park bench to put here, and the um, um, uh, uh, planters are doing just fine here as you can see blooming and, and overflowing um, so that's pretty nice let's see now uh, Frank is routing around in the, in the peanuts all right so that brings us to uh, bed number five and um, these guys are the tomatoes. Now, I planted the tomatoes a little tighter than I normally do, um, but they're also easily six feet tall, and uh, so that's encouraging. They kind of like this soil. As you can see, we've got many, many, many um, green tomatoes coming in. We've had some, uh, some ripened ones of the Juliet variety. Um, this is a Roma variety here called Tyren. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but uh, and then um, this one uh, is a store-bought variety, uh, not doing as well. But uh, this is a larger um, variety that um, is doing pretty well. And uh, then speaking of doing well, this whole end of this bed is uh, ground cherries much to Frankie's delight and uh, they are coming in and um, taking over this whole end uh, plus they also come up all over the garden voluntarily from previous years so um, really kind of an amazing little little plant now we talked about garlic before here's the garlic that um, has not completely fallen over nor completely turned brown uh, so I left those in and you can see there's uh, vacancies where I have pulled the other ones so um, hopefully we're gonna get uh, quite a few more um, garlic out of this deal and uh, speaking of pond irises that are coming up all over the place we think that is one now, uh, over here we have um, all our peppers, and um, some of them are, oops, if I get the camera angled around right, are starting to turn red. Um, this is, uh, I think, Felicity, which is sort of a mild jalapeno pepper. Um, and then these are the ones that I'm really most interested in. Um, you can see the odd shape. They're called Mad Hatter. They're supposed to turn bright red, and they're sort of a mild hot pepper, if I'm, if I can actually say that. 
Um, I don't think they're actually going to be too fiery, but um, just a little bit, uh, which will be fun. And uh, I'm just trying to look for, here's a typical, more typical bell pepper. And um, I got to admit, I'm not really sure uh, what variety it is. And I haven't put up all my labels, um, so I'm lacking on that area just a little bit. Uh, now we got, um, this is a, a, a zucchini, and uh, zucchini, like the other summer squash, has been uh, quite prolific so far, although I don't see anything to show you right now. Um, but they've sort of been crowding out the, um, uh, the um, peppers there. Um, so that's, you know, poor planning on my part. Uh, these are actually a golden zucchini, um, which to me counts as a yellow squash. They have also been very prolific, uh, small ones right now. Doesn't look like we're going to have anything to harvest today, but um, uh, and that brings us to the end of the grow house and uh, uh, sunflowers. This is a kind of a small variety, but they're pretty. And uh, my only problem with them has been um, that uh, uh, they tend to fall over, so I have to spike them up. But uh, they're doing pretty good. Now, let's take a quick walk out to the asparagus bed. And uh, I'll show you that. Um, Benina's been planting all kinds of shrubs around too, making a place. More beautiful. Um, so, oops, I'm sorry. I hope I've got some drone footage to show you because I'm not really doing this very efficiently. Um, so here we are, uh, and you'll notice that that certainly does not look like an asparagus plant, and of course it is not. It is the the one extra, excuse me. Um, pumpkin plant that I put out here. Uh, I haven't seen any forming pumpkins yet, but down here at the end of this vine, which has now escaped, uh, that is a, uh, a female uh, blossom, so we'll see. It's kind of late in the season for, for a, um, uh, a pumpkin to be starting, but um, you never know. Uh, and um, as you can see, here's the uh, the asparagus bed we just went in here oh, and there's a there's another uh, extending uh, pumpkin vine which is uh, kind of interfering a little bit with the with the asparagus but I think they don't care um, so uh, you can see the asparagus is pretty bushy um, it still has that that tendency to to fall over um, uh, but uh, I just sort of push them up and, and uh, let them fall over when they ever want to fall over. And I, I think they're, they're growing healthy anyway. Um, there is a zucchini that I planted out here. And I'm going to try to not get shocked by the electrical fencing. Oh yeah, you can see that right, right kind of center screen there. A nice striped uh, zucchini. Uh, again, that was just planted out here because we had some extra room, so... Um, and that one I should probably pull tonight. Um, and while we're out here, um, the exciting news is, yes, I got uh, cattails coming in. Can you see that? Um, they're greenish right now, um, but I've got at least three forming, and... Uh, I was just hoping they would come back and uh, form some cattails um, this season. All right, let's take a walk back inside. Be appropriate time for more drone footage. If you got it, Marv, post it. Uh, because all I'm doing is coming back in here and. Uh, Looks like 
I didn't put the music on repeat, so it's not playing in the background. Here's the back side of the tomatoes and uh, the sundial, which I pointed out to you last time. And Frankie, of course, who's very good about following me around and joining in on the video. Um, there's uh, some more of this um, uh, lovely Roma uh, um, tomatoes. And uh, these, which are, are probably a larger beefsteak variety, all looking pretty good. But I'm most impressed with the, the height at which these are getting up to, which is um, easily six feet. Now we've got um, all kinds of nasturtium and vincas planted in these uh, boxes now on the on the rails of the, the fencing, which are making things nice. Marigolds all over the place. Um, I forget what these are called, but uh, I thought they would look good as a as a container pot out here, and they do. Um, and let me show you um, over here we've got our um, half barrel water features half fake barrel water features um, the iris are done blooming um, but we do have our water hyacinths there and um, I think this is a mini horsetail uh, which I kind of like the look of and uh, the water hyacinths are doing much better in this this one for some reason but again our um, pond irises are done for the season except for those seed pods but these guys are still blooming uh, and in fact if you look down here see that little cone there that's another bloom coming in I forget what they're called uh, Pyromania, okay. So uh, I should be able to remember that. Uh, and th this one also has a frog that's resident, so uh, um, that's always fun. And uh, just a, again, a half barrel full of various flowers and, uh, and also the, um, the one poinsettia that we uh, salvaged from Christmas time, and uh, let me show you the, the pond before we get completely done here. Um, those are uh, cone flowers, of course. And uh, let me get on the side here so we're not getting sun reflected into us. But you can see the um, fish looking up in it, and um, uh, the pickerel rush is blooming. That other little floating lily uh, has has bloomed. It's a little beyond its its uh, bloom now, but we might be getting some more buds. Um, everything else is green and blooming and looking fine over here. Um, and uh, the only other thing I'm going to show you, besides me, oh, besides me, of course, is. Um, the marigolds and the impatience at the wishing well and um, our other stand of asparagus which is easily 10 years old has never really done a whole lot but it's still going and um, and that's it you know what I mean got our little uh, classic uh, picnic table area and our little swing area and uh, our covered arch which is covered with whatever this stuff is which I don't remember but uh, that's about to bloom whatever it is so with Frankie standing by I think that it's pretty much gonna do it um, yeah, it's uh, a beautiful, warm July day, um, and the garden is looking beautiful, and like I say, at its peak, um, so we're all having a pretty good summer around here, um, hopefully you are too, 
and uh, you're enjoying July and your summer and you will continue to do so and um, this is Marvin Gardens July 2020 we'll see you all next month in August bye everybody happy gardening or summering as the case may be